model steam engines top tip time this one's part 18 often when life admin gets in the way I'm forced to make a video using compilation clips my excuse for not making a new video today although it's not really an excuse it's just a necessity was that about 10 years ago I dropped a steam cylinder on my big toe and after that the nail never grew properly and my big toe resembled the mummy of Pharaoh Ramesses II. I went to get it sorted out during the COVID-19 lockdown, but the second appointment never happened owing to the second COVID-19 lockdown. And despite three cancellations by the NHS, finally I managed to get to see someone yesterday who trimmed the nail, and now it doesn't look good, but it looks better than it did. I don't think that the NHS, that is the National Health Service of Great Britain, are able to cross-reference the appointments of individual patients because the hospital phoned me last week to make an appointment for yesterday to go into hospital for a biopsy. Recently, I had another MRI scan and believe it or not, the results took eight weeks to come through. After making a phone call to complain, I received a letter from the urologist saying that nothing had changed in the last year. Then they made an appointment for the biopsy on exactly the same day as I had the appointment to get my big toe sorted out. And now, once again, I'm waiting for another appointment for the biopsy. That's it for my personal NHS saga. On with the show. This old Stuart S50 is part of a Bassett Loke steam plant, and it's very different to any other of the S50 range I've ever worked on. The steam chest and the cylinder is all one casting, it doesn't detach. I've been tidying up the port face using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper and a piece of mahogany. Now it's time to clean up the slide valve using a spot of oil on some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper and in no time at all that's fine. Here I'm cleaning the slots at the back of the slide valve which are full of rust and general debris. I'm going to use a piece of stainless steel to make the new valve rod because the last one was very very rusty. The first part of the job is to turn down one end so it fits into the guide hole in the end of the steam chest. It's quite difficult turning such a small piece of stainless steel. For one thing stainless steel is quite hard and another is it's so small it bends. So the cutting tool does most of the cutting on the way back and here I'm cleaning it up first of all with some emery cloth then I'm rounding the end with a file and finally I use a piece of wet or dry sandpaper to get a good finish. This needs to be a very loose fit in the guide and when I try it in the guide it can't go very far down into it because the hole is very shallow. With the piece of steel bar firmly clamped in the chuck of my Boxford lathe I'm using one of my tailstock die holders to cut a thread on it. The thread is 7BA. And here I'm temporarily screwing the valve rod into the clevis to make sure that it fits, and it does. But almost as soon as I'd fitted the clevis I removed it, because I need to machine a thread quite a long way down the other end, and this will fit in the driving block which makes the valve travel adjustable. I need to know how long a thread to cut on the main part of the shaft. As I don't have a drawing for this engine, I need to know what the dimensions are, and the best way to find out is to connect the valve rod to the eccentric rod and mark an area where I'm going to cut the thread. And in this clip at a very high speed as the video is speeded up, I'm cutting the thread using my tailstock die holder. And the adjustment of the die is fairly perfect and very very soon I get a really clean thread. This is all that is left of the original driving block and it has a very rusty piece of steel down the middle of it. If I really wanted to, I could dissolve out the steel part using some alum powder and water mixed together, boiled up in a pan and then left for 24 hours. But as this is a very simple part, it's not worth going to the trouble. It's quicker to make a replacement. In the last episode, I made a new valve rod and assembled and fitted it. When I rotate the crankshaft, which moves the eccentric, which moves the valve rod, you can see why I need to make a new gland nut. I've decided that I need to run the engine to see how bad it runs. And in this clip I'm removing what's left of the gasket material on the steam chest cover and cleaning it up. 
I've temporarily refitted the steam chest cover to the valve chest using four of the very rusty original bolts. I will in the fullness of time be changing these. I've put plenty of oil in the steam chest and I'm moving the eccentric back and forth and as you can see, as I do that, the piston rod complete with the crosshead and connecting rod move back and forth also, but it's blowing very badly. The valve isn't seating properly, so I've removed the steam chest cover and I'm having a look inside. The drive block that I made is okay, maybe it could do with a little bit more clearance. The problem seems to be that the valve rod is a little bit tight as it goes down the middle of the valve. And a bit of work with a flat needle file should put this right. It looks like I'm filing at an angle. The camera angle doesn't help this, but I am filing at an angle because the uprights seem to not be square. After attacking the valve with this needle file, everything should be fine when I put it back together. So there's only one way to find out, I'll put it back together. In this clip you can see that there's a good bit more play than there was originally. Because don't forget, slide valves have to float on the driving block and you rely on the pressure of steam in the steam chest to keep the valve on the port face. I think this time round everything should be okay. I've refitted the eccentric rod to the valve rod clevis. It's now working much better. As I rotate the crankshaft which rotates the eccentric and moves the valve rod, the piston rod complete with the crosshead and the connecting rod move back and forth very quickly and there's far less air getting blown to exhaust. Some of the hissing you can hear isn't coming from the exhaust, it's coming from the inlet which is leaking around the steam chest cover. I thought it would be a good idea to fit the flywheel and give it a run. And I must admit, I was really surprised how well it ran. The flywheel is only pushed onto the end of the crankshaft, and the crankshaft is fairly true, or so it would appear. The air is leaking from my pipe, pushed onto the steam chest cover. I set the valve timing fairly accurately, and I'm surprised that it runs this well. There's plenty of power as well. And that's it from me for this episode. It's time to just let you watch the engine running. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.